Are you a fan of Crowd of Products? Or are you interested in just looking? Are you aiming at these two? I'm going to give you my opinion as a musician. And let's start now. Welcome to another ridiculous overdub video by yours truly, Pedro Diaz. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, some people have asked for more videos, so here we are. And a friend of mine from Poland is the Grado fanatic. So I'm doing this one for you. Thank you, buddy. Another thing I wanted to say is that we have opened a live chat in Telegram for patrons. And we're constantly chatting. I'm available 24-7. We can talk about gossip and industry and all that stuff that you're interested in as an audiophile. So consider joining Patreon. Thanks to the store of Audio 46 in New York for letting me try these headphones. If you're in Manhattan, uh, visit the store. It's uh, really spectacular and they have a lot of headphones and you can try them. You can listen to them. They have a lot of stuff. So, don't miss it if you're in Midtown Manhattan. They have good prices, competitive, not like some other tourist stores that take advantage of tourists. They do sell a lot of uh, to travelers, but now, since everybody's home, they do a lot of mail uh, order now. Let's talk about Grado, 60-year-old company. They've been around for a long time. And they produce a few things. They made a microphone, I think, a tone arm many years ago. But of course, they're very well known for the pickup cartridges and the headphones. I have the Bluetooth headphones, which I have reviewed before. But we have these here. Let's talk about the 125X. The construction quality, the build, is typical gravel. The box is never going to be super sophisticated. It's New York, okay? It's Brooklyn. Here's the three generations picture. And that's where the uh, headphones come in. 1953, company foundation. These are very light. And they're mostly plastic. But it's a solid plastic. Here it seems like metal. They're very comfortable. They're small, compact. They're not too bulky. But you have very direct contact to the drivers. Those are the 225s. And then the 325s. What's the difference? On the surface, they look kind of identical, except for the covers. The 325 have a metal body, and the headband is leather. You can see it's leather, stitched, and that's like a look-alike leather plastic. Underneath, there's some cushioning. This is metal with leather, no cushioning underneath. Has about the same metal post, rods, and it looks to have the same pillows. The metal looks really good, but they're heavier. They feel really solid. There's a small issue with both, and that's the cable. The cable is like an iron cable. You cannot remove it, although that doesn't bother me. But for, for today's standards, they're a little bit short, although maybe it's because they're for... You can use it for traveling, and they're easy to drive. And even though the cable feels funny, like you can actually bend it and shape it. Although it's not really like that, but it feels like a little bit of clay inside. 
Is there a difference in sound? Even though 225 and 325X have very similar specifications, the 325 uh, technically has a wider frequency response. I heard them with different amps. I listen to Baroque music like uh, Handel organ concertos. Some Sarah K, uh, some Rush, I listen to Boston, Rubén González, and of course orchestra music, some soundtrack music, and I, I heard the Doom soundtrack, Hans Zimmer. It's interesting. I think they use a Duduk, which they use it in the movies. Especially if there's some like terrorists in the movies, you can hear that instrument. It's an Armenian instrument. I listen to some Bruckner symphonies and some Mahler and Beethoven. Well, things that are on my uh, audiophile list with the Audiophilus y Locos title on Tidal and Amazon in HD. Oh, my dog, Dolly. What do you want? Okay, Dolly. Así que estuve escuchando so, también con la lista de, de Tidal y I listen Amazon on my title list de hecho, and Amazon in HD. Amazon en HD Check Amazon in HD because they're giving you a, a promotion. Y el app te dice and they also have uh, Dolby Atmos and all that stuff to compete with Apple. El app te dice and the app tells you exactly what resolution you're listening to and all, all that. Now, going back to the 225X, the, there is a difference in sound quality. This with the Syncer amplifier, they sound a little bit on the dark warm side. They could use something, something a little more flat like the SMSL HO200 which I'm also Pero reviewing but it depends of the ensemble that you're listening to if it's a you know 60s 70s rock like a power trio like Rush or Jazz Led Zeppelin it, it, it picks up life a saxophone and jazz it sounds live it sounds intimate but it has a very inviting sound, very uh, very exciting, although the, the pillows get a little bit uh, itchy. But as the orchestra gets bigger, you lose a little definition. Uh, you, it's harder to distinguish the instruments and it starts to kind of snowball and it sounds a little cover like that. The mid-ranges get stuck to the, to the bass and, and the voices uh, sort of fall in the back. The Sting song, the new song, by My Funny Valentine by Sting, it's got this duo's uh, record. You lose detail and the instruments get a little bit more mixed up as the ensemble grows. And because of that, they're not super analytical. And it's very good response. And it's a pleasant sound. But when I say pleasant, it means that there's some coloration. Like the HT650s. They, they have a nice coloration that we all like. But if you're listening to a lot of symphonic music, soundtrack stuff, you're not going to hear all the details, all the, you know, the window gets a little bit foggy. But now we speak about the 325X. <laughs> These, then, the biggest difference is the quality of the voice and the sound stage and dynamics. Now you listen to My Funny Valentine from Sting, then the, the voice takes a first uh, plane and it's a little more intimate, takes protagonism, the voice comes closer to you. 
It's a little more refined, more definition, and bigger soundstage. Very wide soundstage. I'd say the biggest change is the quality of voice and the soundstage is a little more three-dimensional. And you can raise the volume a little more and the instruments will remain in their space. You will be able to distinguish them one from the other. There won't be so much morphing of the instruments like in the 225. I noticed the difference enough to to call Gravel, to ask him a few questions. I spoke to John Chen, who had sent me the, uh, the Bluetooth once before, and he explained a few things to me. The chassis, it's solid metal with the inside in plastic. But what's really important is that the drivers are matched. Yeah, match. <laughs> it, it takes a long time to match them. So the, imagine having two cars, two Camrys, same color, same specifications, same year, same tires, and you put them in a highway, and you put the cruise control at 50 miles per hour. Sooner or later, one of them is going to start going faster than the other. So after, you know, 20 seconds or one minute, one of the cars is going to go faster. That means that it's basically impossible to match tolerances. And so the better you can match these drivers, the better they work in unison. They work together. They're going to respond at the same time. And that means you get more detail, more definition, less blurring, less uh, time smearing like in MQA. So that's what the matching the drivers is for, what's really good. That's why some speakers are very expensive because the drivers are matched and that just takes more time and it's more difficult to match them. Same with the microphones. What are the disadvantages of the 325? What are really the disadvantages? It's a little heavier than the 225. So if that's an issue for you or a consideration, um, if you're going to be on the bus, on the train, it's a little bit heavier. Of course, these are open headphones, so you don't really want to use them on the bus or the... Uh, or the train. The cable is a little bit crazy, but for those who are like hardcore uh, headphone fanatics, that they want to change cables. And of course, on the headphones, they <laughs> the cables make a difference on headphones. Not on speaker cables, but on headphones, yes. Everybody should change the cables. The, the pillows. I forgot the name now. You know, the things that are soft. What is the name of these things? Anyway, I, I tried different ones. Oh, I remember. Ear pads. So I got these bigger ones on Amazon. They're quite a bit bigger. And they give you more support, a little more cushioning, comfortable. They're to be used with grados, but they don't recommend them because it changes the tuning. They say you're going to change the tuning. And it actually doesn't help you clamp a little more, which you cannot need. These are, they're not very clampy headphones, and it actually makes it a little bit weaker grabbing on your ears. I think that's pretty much what I have to say. If you're thinking about making a decision and you want to make a decision right now, for $200, it only depends on the type of music that you listen to. If you listen to jazz, salsa, rock, smaller ensembles, they're going to sound great really good but if your expectations are a little more sophisticated you want to hear complex music electronic music lots of detail orchestral music big ensembles 
uh, soundtracks or choral music, then this might give you a long run, longer run, more definition, more robust interpretation. And they will cause less fatigue. Uh, you'll be able to listen for longer in terms of sound quality but how they feel comfort wise they're about the same except these are heavier but weight is good sometimes if you're sitting down it's good to have some little bit of weight but the metal does contribute to the sound this is for light ensembles smaller groups but there's a lot of male voices then the sound starts to get a little bit blurrier thanks to audio 46 for providing the uh, the headphones to try if you like this video please like and you can hit I don't like it if you don't like it that's okay just do something and you're welcome to subscribe if you haven't. This is uh, basically an experimental channel. Uh, we're just having fun here. And I sell uh, my album where I play with the Metropolitan Opera, my colleague musicians, on the website, theaudiophilos.com. Thank you for watching. <laughs>